From the Mutual Studios in Washington, I'm Fulton Lewis, and that's the top of the news as it looks from here. Marshall, welcome to the sound of suspense, to the fear you can hear. I have an unusual story about a father and son. You know it is said that love and hate are two sides of the same coin. If this is so, Phil, the son, never believed it. His hatred blinded him to the extent that he lost all humanity and compassion for his father. This is Phil Coleman. It's not in the past. It's now. Every day of my life since I can remember. It was my mother's life. The life of my sister. It wasn't only his miserable life that was destroyed. It was all of us. My mother dead at 43. My sister, I don't even know where she is. Or what became of her. Now look, Mr. Coleman, I can appreciate what you've been through, but if you won't take him, he'll die here in prison. Let him. Let him die. Our mystery drama, Accounts Receivable, was especially written for the Radio Mystery Theater by Sidney Sloan and stars William Prince. It is sponsored in part by Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser, and by the Kellogg Company, makers of Kellogg's Special K cereal. I'll be back shortly with Act One. parked his battered pickup truck in the prison compound marked for visitors. He walked 50 yards to the dirty gray guardhouse and presented his credentials to the stony-faced officer who permitted Coleman to step out again into the rain and proceed toward the great dirty granite complex, the maximum security prison for the state. Once inside, Coleman was ushered into the office of the chief prison doctor. Uh, Mr. Coleman, will you have a chair? I just want to get out the file on your father. I'm sorry you had to come out on such a nasty day. Uh, let me see here, Coleman. Uh, uh, Richard. Uh, oh, here we are. I don't really need to look at the file on Rich Coleman. I almost know it by heart. Uh, caught in the police trap after being at large for 12 days after the payroll robbery at the Sphinx Tool and Dye Company plant. Both his accomplices, Buddy Mayer and Mickey Montrose, killed, running from the police, and their share of the robbery recovered. Only your father held out, denying that he had any part of the money. Please, Doctor. I know the story. Yeah, I suppose you do. Do you think he hid his share somewhere before the police got him? I don't know any more than you do. One hundred and six thousand dollars. Your father was quite a celebrity all over the papers, TV, radio. Nobody talked of anything else at the time. He was something of a folk hero. Gunman? Bank robber? A folk hero? Now, look, Mr. Coleman, uh, the reason I asked you to come is that I couldn't write what I wanted to say. I discussed the matter with the warden, and he approved of my plan. He will cooperate, and with his help, it won't be too difficult to obtain a parole. Parole? He's... He's coming out? He's had a serious heart attack. It's his third. Now, the parole can be arranged for humane reasons, etc. There's only one catch. The warden will go along with this if... if you will assume responsibility. No. He's a sick old man. No. What if you won't take him? He'll die here. Let him. Let him die. How long is it since you've seen him? I went to his trial. I took my mother. Over nine years ago. You haven't seen him or written to him since? Well, he wrote to me when he was informed that my mother died. I didn't answer. He sent birthday cards to Harry, my son. I want you to do something for me. I want you to see him. No. 
No, I, I couldn't. I want you to do it for me. I won't ask anything else of you. Don't take long, Mr. Coleman. <laughs> can wake up a bit and talk? Hmm? Oh, it's you, Doc. What do you want? I brought someone to see you, Rick. Hello? Rick? Who is it? It's your son, Rick. He's come to see you. So? You? Yeah. Yeah, Rick. Uh, how, how are you feeling? I feel fine. A little under the weather. I, uh, how's the kid? Oh, Harry's fine. He's uh, going to school. Fine. Nina, how's she? I only saw her that one time at the trial. Oh, she's she's okay. She's getting on. If so, I wonder if when you get back, would you send me a picture of Harry? Oh yeah, I guess so. I'd appreciate that. Sure. Sure, I'll send you a picture. Well, well, only so if you don't mind. I'd like to have my grandson send it. Bill, is that you? Yeah, Nina. Come on out in the kitchen. I'm fixing dinner. Yeah. Smells good. One of your favorites. I thought I'd make you feel better with a good meal in you after a day of driving in the rain. Is it still raining? Oh, it stopped about an hour ago. Just about when I got to Glens Falls. That's good. We had enough rain. Yeah. Harry home? Yeah, in his room doing his homework. But was that radio going? <laughs> he says he concentrates better. Ames call? Yeah, twice. About 30 minutes ago. He uh, seemed angry. Uh, that's too damn bad. I wish you and him got along. It'd make it so much easier. But he never does his share of the work at this station. If he has to go out and bump a tank of gas, you'd think the world was coming to an end. Got to get his hands dirty. Well, now, you knew he didn't know anything about the gas station business, Phil. Okay, though. okay, I needed his money, but I can't carry him on my back. I got to buy him out. Well, ain't you going to ask me? I know you'll get around to it in your own time. I saw him. Talk to him. How is he? Hard to recognize him. Gotten so old. I don't think he knew me at first. He's been sick. Hard. Doc said it was his third, a bad one. Is that why they wanted you to come see him? Uh, uh, partly. They had something else up their sleeve. They're going to let him out. Out? Well, I thought he was, he was in for life. That's right. Four-time loser, they call it. According to the state laws, that's life. But because of his health, the doc called it uh, humane reasons or something. They'll parole him. And they have to get your approval, huh? That, that why they made you come? <laughs> something like that. They want me to be responsible for him. What? Want me to take him in, take care of him. Well, maybe he wouldn't want that, Phil. He's got nothing to say about it. It's either that or die in prison. Oh, Phil. I told him. I told him. No. I wouldn't have him. Now, Phil, you know you're going to take him in. No, no, I'll never have him in my house. Let that jailbird die where he belongs. Let him die in prison. That is hot tip in the seventh, I think. Skitch! Uh, just a minute, Lou. Can't you see I'm busy, Coleman? Oh, anyway, so what happens? I plunge. I put 20 on his nose. Skitch, cut it short, will you? I want to talk to you. Lou, I'm sorry. I'll have to continue this later. Boy, have you got a nerve. Are your damn telephone call so important you can't wait on a customer? That punk, I knew he was there. Give me two bucks worth. I'm trying to discourage customers like that. Looks like you're trying to discourage all of them. We're losing people every day to Ray Damon at the People's Corner. Good. Why don't you buy me out and go join up with your buddy Ray? You make me very happy. I can't talk to you anymore without getting into a little fight. I want out, Coleman. I want it quick. Buy my half of the business and run things your own crooked way. Crook, kid? What are you saying? I'm wise to you, Coleman. I've known about you for the last three years. What? 
I should have known it four years ago. I could have avoided all this. Avoided what, Ames? Okay, buddy, if you want it cold and clear like a weather report, your father's a jailbird. Go on. Why should I go on? You get what I mean. No, I don't. I'd like to have you spell it out. All nice and slow. You know the old saying, like father, like... <coughs> You're the lowest scub I've ever known. To lay on me about what my father's done. I've never cheated you out of one lousy cent. I put up with you, split even with you for four years. You haven't done five cents worth of work. This does it. I want you to get up 15 grand by the end of the month and buy me out. I'm seeing Clark Wetley at the bank tomorrow morning. As for you, you don't have to come around here to use the phone in the men's room. You just stay home. I'll send you your cut. Now get out of my service station. Hello, Mr. Wetley. I, I want you to excuse me for calling you at home after business hours. Well, you see, I can't make it down to the bank during the day. I've been trying for over a week. I, uh, I'm kind of short-handed. Who, Ames? Uh, well, th that's why I'm calling you. I, I want to buy him out. You see, it's a good business for one owner, but when you divide it in two... Well, what I'm trying to say is I'm, I'm going to need a, a big loan from the bank. Fifteen. Yeah, that, that's what he wants for his share. Well, he won't take less than that. Yeah, I, I, I know it's tough trying to do this over the phone. Maybe uh, tomorrow morning. Oh, thanks, thanks. I, I appreciate that. Well, how'd he sound? Oh, I don't know. No, that's a lot I'm asking for. Till suppose you can't get the money. What can Ames do? He called me on the phone at the station today. He says he's talking to his lawyer. And if I can't make it, he says he can force a sale of the property and a division of the proceeds. You know what that would amount to after we paid off the five grand loan to the bank and, and, and legal fees? Maybe five, six thousand each? Five thousand. Out of work. How long would it last? You know, I'm desperate. I, I, I never felt so boxed in in my life. I, I got only ten more days till the end of the month. Oh, darling, don't worry. We'll manage. I'll, I'll get that. Yes. Yes, this is the Coleman residence. Who's... Co well, yes, he's home, but who, who, I don't know... Who is it, Nina? Uh, pardon me a minute. Phil, it's that doctor. The, the doctor from the prison? What do I need this for? At this time. I know what he wants, and he knows how I feel. Tell him to... No, give me that phone. Look, doctor, why can't you leave me alone? I, I, I don't want him now or ever. That's final. Goodbye. I can remember wanting a father so much that it hurt. I'd cry at night in my bed and I'm quiet so my mother wouldn't hear. I'd pray. Please, God, let me have him around for a week, huh? a whole day, an hour. That's when I really believed in a God. I swore that if I ever had a kid, I'd love him, take care of him. Clean and honest like his father. I've never taken a cent that didn't belong to me, Nina. I know that, dear, and I love you for it. You're a good man. That wasn't the first time the doctor has called, was it? No, he... He's called at least five times in the last few days. Call him. Tell him that the old man can come. Oh, Phil. I don't know how we're going to manage. And so Phil Coleman yields to the pressure around him to accept his father into his home. The barrier of hate he has built up, however, will not dissolve. We'll return shortly with Act Two. The first of the month has come, 
and Phil Coleman has not been able to raise the money to buy out his partner. Another event is taking place which brings him no joy. His father is coming today to become a permanent member of the household. It's them, Mom. They're here. It's Dad's pickup truck for Grandpa. Now, Harry, Harry, take it easy. You know how excited you get about things. Now, remember, he's an old man and he's been very sick. I know, I know. Mom, I'm really glad to see him. Well, go open the door. Dad's carrying the suitcase. Welcome, Grandpa. Here, let me take this suitcase. Dad, I'll show him to his room. Well... Come in. Don't just stand in the door. Sure. Thanks. Let me take the suitcase. Huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah, here. Follow me, Grandpa. I'll show you where you bunk. Uh, Harry, take it easy. <laughs> Give him a chance to catch his breath. You, uh... You want to sit down, Rick? Okay to sit, Phil. Sure. Uh... If you want anything, coffee or tea or anything... I ain't allowed to drink coffee. Oh. Well, if you're tired... No, I ain't you, tired. you can go to bed. Don't sit up to be polite. I, I ain't tired. Oh, Nina, I'm, I'm going down to the station. I got a little work to do. Well, Eddie called up at 7 when he closed up, Bill. What's the point of going there at this hour? Well, today's the first of the month. I said I'd pay my bills. <laughs> Some people do, you know. Phil, your father just got here. I got bills to pay, Nina. How about a game of checkers, Grandpa? Uh, homework, Harry? I did it this afternoon so I'd have a chance to spend some time with Grandpa. How about it, Grandpa? I'm going to show you how to play that game. I was a champ at it. <laughs> Call my service station. Oh, Mr. Wetley. Uh, yeah, yeah, I called the bank earlier, but they said you was busy. Yeah. Well, it, it's getting kind of urgent. You see, I told Ames I'd be able to settle matters with him around the first of the month. It's the 11th already. He calls me every day. Mr. Wetley, I'm desperate. I gotta get that loan. What? Well, when can you let me know? Well, uh, couldn't you make it sooner? Okay, Mr. Wetley. I, I know you're doing your best for me. Uh, pardon me, Mr. Wetley. Someone wants gas. Uh, please call me as soon as you know. Thanks. Goodbye. Coming. Oh, I'm sorry to keep you... It's the way you do business, Coleman. You're going to run this joint into the ground in three months. Well, I'm <laughs> sorry, but Eddie's out to lunch. There's something, Skitch. Mr. Ames to you, Coleman. Fill her up. Sure, sure. Reason I dropped by, Coleman, my lawyer is drawing up papers to dissolve our partnership and... Uh... Well, I, I was just talking to the bank when you drove in. Good. When are you getting the cash? Uh, soon. What does that mean? Either you're going to get it or you ain't. Don't try stalling me with soon. You said you'd have it before the end of last month. You know what the date is today? I'm doing my best. It and... ain't good enough. Now, give me a little time. I mean, you, you get your 15 grand. I'll give you another week. <laughs> Thanks, Ames. You know why I think you're going to be able to come up with the money? Your old man is living with you now. What the hell are you driving at? Everybody knows he's got over 100000 stashed away from that job he did about 10 years ago. You fat pig! I'll pull you out of that car. Oh, my God, you're choking me! <laughs> okay. Now get out of here. <laughs> I'm a natural for basketball, Dad. All I need is practice. Yeah, 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 good. Nina, you know I got to get back and relieve Eddie for dinner if the meal ain't it's ready. It's all ready, Phil. It's all ready. Rick, food's on the table. Thought I'd join you for a grub. I don't want to cause no trouble. Sit down, Grandpa. I... Uh, there was a man here to see you today, Rick. See me? Mm-hmm. Can't imagine who'd be coming around to see me. Maybe someone will sell me. Phil. Guess maybe Phil's right. One of my old buddies. Yes, sir. What can I do for you? Now, Mr. Coleman. Yeah. Sorry to bother you during business hours, but it seemed like the best time to talk to you alone. Oh, my God. Herbert McCauley, Crandler, Nepping, International Insurance. 
I'm an insurance detective. Let me explain. When a big job is pulled, maybe a hundred, two hundred grand, even bigger, the insurance companies have to fork over the money to the people who have insurance to cover such things. The money that isn't recovered, that is. You get me? Yeah. But uh, what you don't know is the insurance companies never give up. They'll follow a man right into his grave to get back the stolen cash. Take your father's case, for example. I don't want to go into it. I know all about it. It might be worth your while to talk to me. Ten percent of 106,000 bucks is a lot of green. 106,000 was your father's cut of the heist. And that's the amount still missing from the Sphinx Tool and Die Company hold up ten years ago. But on trial, he said he never got his share, that his buddies cheated him. Ah, bunk. The jury didn't believe him then, and I don't believe him now. He's got it. <laughs> but he'll never be able to spend a buck of it. We've been after him for ten years already, and that ain't nothing. We kept after a guy for twenty years and finally got the money back. Happened before I got in the company. And they caught the guy digging up a big glass bottle stuffed with moldy old bills. And <laughs> here's the laugh. The bills were the big old size printed before they changed over to the small ones. He couldn't have spent the money. <laughs> it was out of date. Yeah, I, uh, I, I'm a busy man, Mr. Uh... Yeah, but Collie, I, uh, I was over to your house yesterday to talk to Rick, but I, I figured it'd be better talking to you. Oh, so that was you. Look, I, I, I'm shorthanded here. You're, you're keeping me... I guess from... you didn't hear what I said a moment ago. You could get 10% of 106 grand just for helping me get the money back from your father. Okay, now, what's the big mystery? Where's Harry? Didn't go to church last Sunday either. No big mystery, Phil. He's out with the boys practicing basketball. Do you have to practice today? It's the only time the basketball field or court or whatever they call it is available. Mm, so the little stinker thought he was going to get away with it, did he? Oh, well, now, don't be too hard on him. He's a good boy, and he works very hard at his schoolwork. Oh, I know. I used to go A-wall Sundays whenever I could as, as a kid, play basketball. Used to make my mother sore. <laughs> Once she came right out to the lot where I was playing and grabbed my ear and walked me free box like that to school. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I ain't mad at him, but I had to make a little fuss to show him the comics. Okay, Nina. Now, now, don't make a big thing out of it, huh? I think he's home yet? Oh, he wouldn't be this early. Got your key? Well, the door isn't locked. Your father's home. Well, Harry, you're home. Hello, Mom. Hi, Dad. This is Mr. Kanaki. My gym teacher. Ah, uh, hello, Mr. How do you Cohen. Do? I'm uh, sorry to bother you, especially on a Sunday, but... Anything uh, wrong? Well, Mr. Coleman, let me tell you that I know Harry's a good boy and an excellent student. And nothing is going to be done to uh, to spoil his record. Well, what, what are you driving at, now, Mr. Now, don't lose your temper, Phil? Mr. Coleman. Uh, it's just that Harry and two other boys have been playing basketball in the school gymnasium on Sundays. Well, what's so bad about that? Well, they had to break into the school to use the gym. Now, although they're all 14 and wouldn't be prosecuted for criminal action at that age, breaking and entering is a serious matter. Breaking and entering. And when we found the locks Jimmy last week, we set a trap this Sunday. And what do you intend to do? Oh, well, frankly, we are not going to do anything. But we expect that the boy's parents will exert some sort of influence to keep this from recurring. You've, uh, you've talked to the other parents? Oh, yes, on the phone. Three boys, club busting into the school... You call and tell the parents of the other two kids about it on the phone. But Harry's folks get a personal interview. Why? Well, uh... <laughs> you see, this is uh, sort of difficult to explain, Mr. Coleman, but... Uh, uh, maybe, maybe I can help you. Wait, Phil. Harry, you go to your room. No, no, he better stay right here. Sit down, Harry. Now, Mr. Kanaki, I'll tell you why you came here to talk to me. Personal-like. You know the name Coleman for a long time, don't you? Read about it in the papers? Well, uh, really, it was your son who revealed that Rick Coleman was his grandfather. He turned in a theme last week to his English teacher, Mrs. Margolis, which uh, <laughs> rather shocked her. He, uh, he used bad words? Oh, no, 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 that wasn't it. He, he, he seemed proud of the accomplishments of his grandfather, extolled his uh, talent, so to speak. Now, aren't you making a lot more out of this than is really there? Well, I... 
I told Mr. Gilchrist I didn't want to come here, but he insisted. It seems that he, um... Well, he wanted to know about your father, Mr. Coleman. We understand that he's living with you. You think he's been a bad influence? Oh, I'm trying not to make any judgments, Mr. Coleman, but I expect you will. And now I think I've said enough. Please excuse me for spoiling your day. Goodbye. Keep your nose clean there, Harry. Bye, Mr. Tanaki. Go to your room, Harry. Yes, Dad. I got a lot of homework anyway. Well, what are you going to do, Phil? I don't know. But I'm going to start out with him. With Rick. In Phil's mind, his father's influence was spreading like some evil disease. Now even young Harry was infected. But what he neglected to notice was the change in his own character. We'll be back shortly with Act Three. Despite Phil's resolve to speak to his father immediately, so many other matters converged on him that it was several days before he had time to get Rick alone for the soul-searching talk that he envisioned. Strangely enough, the conversation, when he finally got around to it, took an entirely different course. Come. Rick, you busy? <laughs> Doing what? I've been expecting you for the last couple of days. Harry said you wanted to talk to me. Yeah, yeah, but I've been busy. I, I've got lots of troubles. I'm only one, huh? Well, you want I should pack up and... What are you talking about? Only place I gotta go is back to stir. Now that the kid gets wrapped with a charge of breaking and entering. I figure this is it. Time for me to pack well, up. Well, why did you give him all the stuff on you? The story he wrote for his teacher about your life. He told me he was going to write it. He asked me for help. I told him don't do it. It'll get get you in trouble. So he goes down to the library, and they let him see the old newspapers and microfilms. Oh, so that's how he got it. Ask him. No, no, I, I believe you. First time in your life, I felt. What? That you believe me. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Rick, you know uh, Macaulay, insurance detective? Him. That old troublemaker... First couple of years I was in stir, he was practically my only visitor. Yeah, well, he came to see me with uh, something on his mind. Yeah, don't tell me, I know. That old story, huh? That dough was supposed to be my cut. They want it. They, they, they're willing to pay me to help them get it. He went off at you 10%, right? That's right. What'd you tell him? Listen, I gotta explain something to you. You told him you'd go along. You'd get the money, didn't you? Look, look, Rick. Y you'll never be able to spend it. I'm desperate for cash. I need 15000 to pay off my partner, to, to get him out of the business. I know. Harry gave me all the details. And if he forces a sale to dissolve the partnership, I'm, I'm done for. We both won't get what the place is worth, and I'll be out of work. What can I do? Look, the bank is holding back on lending me fifteen, but I could, I could get five. Give me the money, Rick. Oh, boy. That's a laugh. <laughs> You've never done anything for me in my whole life. Now's your chance to pay me back for the kind of childhood and life I've had because of you. Hold on, hold on. I'd like to help you if I could, but I can't. Why not? Because you want to hog the whole 106000 for yourself? You think that? Yeah, Macaulay does too. I haven't got the money. You know where it is? No. I said at the trial I didn't get my cut. They cheated me. Yeah, they said you were lying then. I told the truth. You're lying now. Okay. Suppose I'm lying. I'm not giving up that money because there ain't no money. Yeah? Busy? Dad? Come on in. I didn't want to bother you, Harry, if you're doing your homework. I'm nearly finished. You want to talk to me? Yeah. Yeah, Mom's in the kitchen doing the dishes. Uh... I thought this would be the best time to talk to you alone. If it's about that trouble, you know the Sunday basketball business? Don't worry. I had a long talk with Mr. Gilchrist, and he's going to forget the whole matter. Also, in spite of the fact that Mrs. Margolis 
didn't like the subject matter of the theme. She gave me an A- minus for effort and research. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's good. I won't make stupid mistakes like that again, Dad. You can bet on it. Yeah, yeah. Look, what about Rick? What do you mean? Well, where does he go when he goes out? He hardly ever goes out. He sits around in his room most of the time. I asked him about it. You know something? He's been locked up for so long in a jail cell that he isn't used to having any freedom. He told me he doesn't feel safe outside. How do you like that? But when he does go out, where does he go? Once a month. He has to report to his parole officer. The office is over on Dean Street. I walked over there with him once. He wanted my company. Well, any other time? I mean, uh, does he go out maybe when you're in school or nobody's home? He would slip out, kind of secret-like? Why would he do that, Dad? Well, I'm just asking. You know, I'm responsible for him. I know. But you don't have to worry about Grandpa. He told me he doesn't want any more trouble in his life. He's a sick old man. Yeah, yeah. You're right. One thing. It bothered him when he sort of let it slip out one time when we were talking. It bothered me, too. What was that? About the money? What money? Oh! You mean the money they think it's hidden? He doesn't have the money. He never had it. Yeah, yeah, that's what he told me. You don't believe him? Well, let's forget I ever brought it up, huh? (laughs) If Rick convinced you, that's all that counts. That's what I was trying to tell you. That bothers him. You and Mom, you both call him Rick. Yeah? He's your father. Couldn't you... What do you want me to call him? Daddy? No, not that way. But just once, be nice to him. Make him feel like he belongs. <laughs> Rick never done anything in his life for me. Fifteen grand, Bill. Fifteen grand. You should be able to get that up in no time. I, I, I can't. I can't. There's a bank says I got. I got to get. I, I got to get more collateral. Everyone knows he's got over a hundred thousand stashed away. I wouldn't touch that. I I wouldn't touch. Ten percent of one hundred and six thousand. I'll keep my mouth shut. Ten percent. That's fair. I wouldn't touch that dirty money. One hundred and six thousand. Rick earned the money. Phil, wake ten up. Ten years. Nearly ten years. Phil, darling, prison. you're having a bad it's dream. Mine. It's my money. Phil. It belongs to me. Darling, please, wake up. No. No. No, it's my money. All of it. Phil, open your eyes. You were no. having a bad dream. I, I could hardly wake you. Oh. Are you all right? Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I'm all right. Do you, oh. you want a glass of water or something? No, no, no. No, I, I'm okay now. You were dreaming about that money, weren't you? You kept saying something about 106000 And then you said, it's mine. It belongs to me. Oh, that's just a dream. You know, forget it. I'm getting up. Phil, it's one o'clock in the morning. You've only been asleep two I'm hours. I'm getting up. Mind if I switch on the light? No. I'm going out, Nina. Out? At this hour? When will you be back? Uh, later. I, I don't know. I don't want you to say anything to Harry about this. Or to anyone. Understand? No. But I won't say anything if you don't want me to. Well, I, I'd like to explain, but there's no time. Rick? Rick? Yeah. Wake up. Yeah. Who is... Who is... It's me. Me. Rick. Get up. Mr. Martin. I'll turn the light on. What's going on? Get your clothes on, Rick. What time is it? It's the middle of the night. Get your clothes on. Yeah, sure, fellas. Sure, you say so. Come on, hurry up. Get dressed. Sure, sure. But I don't get it. Mm-hmm. But I do. What? What you owe me. Oh. Oh, you mean for room and board? 
Oh, sure. Look, Rick, I don't want to play games with you. I want the money that you hid away for ten years. You owe it to me, and I need it. <laughs> you really think I got it? You really think I got it? I will... Get up, get up! Hey, don't you laugh at me. Don't you ever laugh at me. I wasn't. It just struck me that you believe I got that loot stashed away someplace. Just like everybody else. That's right. And I want it. Now, you and me are going to go where that money is. Phil, tonight. I swear I ain't got it. I never had it. Please, get up. Yeah, come on, come on, get up. I told you the truth, Phil. You never told the truth in your whole rotten life. But you're going to come clean with me now, Rick. We're going out tonight. And we're going to get that money. All of it. Phil, you're acting crazy. It's mine. That money. You owe it to me. It's kind of like what they call accounts receivable. It can't work, Phil. It can't work. Why not? Because there ain't no money. There never was. I never got any cut. Rick. Rick, you all right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Just fine. Well? Okay. Okay. Let's go. You win. How much farther? We went out nearly an hour. Keep going. It's near Plainfield. I'll tell you when. We're five miles past Plainfield. It's near here. I recognize it. I see it. Stop. Stop here. Okay. Now where? Here. See this here path? Up to the top of the hill. Wait till I get the shovels out. You feel all right? Sure, sure. Let's go. It's not easy climbing up ahead. Keep going. Keep going. Here. Here. This is it. Here. Start digging. You sure this is the right place? Rick? You hear me? All right. You all right? I was asking if you could have been mistaken about, about the spot. All right. The spot where you had the money. Oh, no mistake. No. Down over three feet now. Deeper. Okay. I'm getting pushed. Give me a shovel. I'll help. No, 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 no. I, I'm okay. Give me a shovel. Give me. Sure. I don't know why you want to. You're too weak to do much. Here. You want to know why I want to dig? Why? So... Sorry for what I've done to you. Yeah, why, 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 why you want to dig? I didn't give you nothing in your whole life. I'm really sorry for it. I was rotten, Cleve. You know why I want to dig? No, no, why? Because I'm digging my own grave. Hey, Rick! Rick, what is it? Get me down. Get me down. There ain't no money, Phil. Not a damn cent. No, though, I was telling the truth once in my life, and nobody believed me. Okay. I believe you. No, no take it easy. You, you're going to be okay. No, never. No. Why'd you want to go through with this whole digging business if you knew it wasn't there? I wanted to show you what wanting money can do even to an honest Joe like you. Now, maybe you can understand the kind of mug your father was. Oh, Rick. Rick. Listen. Everything's going to be all right between us from now on. Sure. Sure. Only one thing. Yeah? Call me something besides Rick. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I've been wanting to. I, I've been wanting to. That easy for me to say it. <laughs> pa? Pa? You get well? Don't die, Pa. Thanks, Phil. Thanks, son. Pa! Phil Coleman searched for a father all his life and lost him at the moment of finding him. I'll be back shortly. side of the coin was revealed to Phil too late. But in his heart was a new understanding of his father, of his son, and the meaning of love. Our cast included William Prince, Joseph Julian, Ralph Carter, Joan Lovejoy, Robert Dryden, and Ian Martin. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Now, a preview of our next tale. I said, who are you? Tell Spencer. me. Spencer. What, what are you doing here? Now, look, darling, if this is a... Oh, no. Oh, oh, oh. what am I doing if here? If this is a joke, it's not in the best of taste. Well, I'm afraid. I'm afraid I don't know where I am. Or, uh, or who you are. Where are you going? Home. This is your home, Spencer. Uh, please, uh, don't be alarmed, please. I, I hope I haven't frightened you. I'll, I'll leave this minute. <laughs> mean that after 23 years of marriage, you look at your wife one morning and you don't know who she is? This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. Preceding Mystery Theater program was furnished by the CBS Radio Network. This is WOR New York, an RKO General Station, your station for news as it happens. Your dial is set for the latest international, national, and local news with John Scott reporting from the 710 Newsroom. WOR New York, the time, 8 o'clock.